I drink tons of water. I think that's important too. I always try to make sure, especially when I'm on tour and I'm like drinking or staying up late or whatever. I feel like if you just drink tons of water, it helps a lot. Um, going back to, you know, wellness and mental health and stuff like being on like a long bike ride on this wilderness reserve or, or you know, hiking through these areas where like you literally have no cell phone service and you're in the middle of, you know, national forests. It's great to like not even have the option of like putting on Netflix or scrolling through Instagram or whatever. And it's nice for three or four days to just unplug from all that. And, you know, you're all sitting around the campfire having a conversation at the end of the night. And it's just really cool. I've gotten a lot out of it. I, I remember like specifically the first time I felt like horrible anxiety. The first time I was like, what is this? Something's wrong. And I was like, holy shit, this is anxiety. I've never felt this before on this scale this is something i have to be aware of and i have to stop a lot of times and just be like all right take some deep breaths or you know go on a run i need to like hit the reset button welcome to the collaborative resource hub by wellness provisions we're bridging the gap between mental health wellness and rock and roll i'm amy mcbride owner of wellness provisions the most badass wellness business hey are you feeling a little stuck in life i offer wellness coaching sessions Book a session with me if you're seeking to get healthy and ahead. Sessions are available worldwide. And check this out. Wellness Provisions supplies rock and rollers with high quality supplements. We've simplified your shopping experience and given you a trustworthy place to go where you can essentially shop blindfolded. And did you know? All our Collaborative Resource Hub interviews air on YouTube as well as all major podcast platforms. Subscribe to stay in the loop. Go immerse yourself in the full Collaborative Resource Hub experience over on our website. You'll have access to helpful resources that will inspire and educate you. So let's inspire each other. If that guy did it, so can you. Last but not least, my legal disclaimer, nothing in this interview or the Collaborative Resource Hub substitutes medical advice. Please connect with your GP if you need medical guidance. Matt from Strike Anywhere in Evening Shadows, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I am doing very well too, thank you. Awesome, thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked to talk to you. So, cause you, we are local, we are uh, in the same town pretty much. So here we are yeah. on Zoom locally. <laughs> yep, that's a great place to be. So if you had to describe your bands to someone who hasn't heard you guys before, how would you describe each of them like sonically? It's tough cause I think a lot of times what you think you sound like is different than what, you, what people think you sound like. Mm -hmm. um but you know strike anywhere for for people who've never heard it i kind of just describe it as like fast melodic punk rock you know we think we come from the lineage of like seven seconds and gorilla biscuits and uh and you know like avail and other bands kind of from our from our where we grew up but you know other people sometimes even think different or like bad religion would be a big influence just fast melodic punk rock you know there's not a there's some screaming but most of it's like really melodic um vocally and then you know but it's really fast and kind of aggressive at the same time awesome and evening shadows what is that so about evening shadows is a really fun new project i'm doing with a bunch of my buddies here in wilmington north carolina and it's just just kind of fun simple punk rock songs um you know much more mid-tempo a little bit cleaner guitars lots of harmonies but just you know we're going from a little bit more of like the kind of screeching weasel meets like beach boys kind of vibe is what we're going for like just All kind right. of fun catchy simple you know four chord punk rock but you know with some cool elements from you know some of our, our very varied backgrounds that we all have in the band yeah but it's a it's a blast we've only been doing it for a couple of years we've got one record we just put out um and we're just having a ton of fun with it pretty much playing locally but we've had like a few kind of like we did show up in Richmond and Triangle, uh, like Raleigh, Durham area. But, you know, hopefully a little bit more this year coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. Now that touring should get easier, you guys should be able to get some more shows farther out. Yeah. It's just hard. It's hard to time everything right now. You know, like it's I mean, as everyone knows, the dial keeps getting turned up and back, you know, and, and just try and, and when you're trying to book things, you know, we're we're like not as organized as a lot of people, but you know, a lot of bands, they book stuff a year in advance, year and a half in advance. And uh, just trying to hope that that's gonna happen and not get canceled. Like I have so many friends right now who are still doing music as their full-time careers. And you know, they've had all these Europe trips get canceled and just all these tours that fall through and get canceled a week before they're supposed to go. And it's just hard to, it's hard to navigate that. Um, yeah. 
but I'm hopeful that we're headed in the right direction and everybody can start going to shows more. I think we are, which brings us to the topic of this, which is wellness. So you got to keep your immune system strong if you want to be able to uh, live your life. So mm -hmm. what does wellness or just like well-being mean to you? Well, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> As, as I've gotten older, I'm in, I am now in my mid forties. And, uh, as I've gotten older, I'm having to pay more attention to wellness and I'm having to focus on it more and make it more of a priority. You know, when you're in your twenties, you can get four hours of sleep and drink all night and wake up and feel fine. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you have more responsibilities, so as you get older, you don't bounce back quite, quite as quick. So, um, I just try to stay like extremely active. Uh, I just try to set small goals and I try to just stay as active as I can throughout the week, even like, you know, now I'm nine to five and, you know, like on my lunch break, I pretty much skateboard every day on my lunch break. Right now, that's the thing that I'm doing a lot. Like I, over the years, it kind of always shifts what my focus is like, you know, with right when COVID kicked off, like everybody else, I started running all the time. And, um, and I live in Carolina beach and we've got a really good trail system in the state park. And, uh, I would just run back there every day on my lunch break. And for me, it's a good mental reset in the middle part of the day. Like when I'm kind of hit the wall of focus at work and it just makes me feel good. You know, it's just like such a reward. It kind of sucks while you're doing it, you know, to be <laughs> honest. Sometimes, sometimes it feels great. Sometimes you're like, I can run, I'm running so fast. I'm running so good today. And then sometimes it's horrible, but yeah. like you feel great after you always feel great afterwards. Right. You know, maybe not, maybe not five minutes afterwards, but half an hour afterwards, like you're focusing your energy. So I know that's cliche. I know everybody was doing that. Um, but right now, for some weird reason, I've decided to start skateboarding again in my mid forties after like about a 15 to 20 year hiatus. But oh, wow. it's not, it's not just me. I've got a whole group of like 40 year old dads and we all are back hot on the skating thing. And, um, you know, we luckily our area of Wilmington has a bunch of cool outdoor parks and, uh, you know, we all meet up in the morning or the evening or at lunch and, and skate. And that's just a way that I can like have a, like a focus kind of reset in the middle part of my day. And I have a son, he's six and I'm just getting him into it. And it's something we can do together. Oh, cool. So we've been, uh, we've been skating a bunch. Yeah. I got a couple little ramps under the house, a couple quarter pipes and we'll just go, we got a nice bike path and we'll go and just push down the bike path and, um, we're having a blast. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So when you, okay, you mentioned how, I mean, cause this happens to me too, with like when I'm exercising, I just, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be doing this right now. What helps you get over that hurdle and finish instead of giving up? Well, um, you know, I guess it's just finding, you have to find a way to get exercise in a way that is the most rewarding and the least kind of annoying way possible. You know, like I, I love surfing and um, you know, when I kind of quit skateboarding basically in like my early twenties and I was like still touring a bunch and I would sprain my wrist and I'd have a show coming up and not be able to play guitar and whatever else, I kind of shifted towards surfing and I didn't live at the beach, but then eventually I did move down to North Carolina and I moved to the beach and you know, surfing is a lot easier on the joints and you know, falling and all that. And um, that's like my favorite way to get a really good workout and get exercise, but there's not always waves, right? Um, especially here. Yeah. Well, that's so, it. I go to the beach a lot and I just, and I see some people, you know, I guess it's still good just for your mental health to just be like out on your board in the water, but I'm just like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, unless there's a tropical storm yeah. or hurricane coming, what? It does. Yeah. It depends. Certain times of the year, it'll be more consistent, but you know, I mean, like, like on a good week, you're maybe surfing two, three times on a bad, sometimes I'll go weeks without surfing and you know, then trying to stay active, like riding bikes a lot, you know, I've got a road bike and I'll, I'll, you know, I was doing like long bike rides, which is cool, but it just gets a little like monotonous, um, which is good because it gives your mind like a chance to kind of shut down and just go into weird, you know, like standby mode where you're just like thinking all these weird thoughts and you're not actively like, that's what I love about endurance stuff, which is very different from like skateboarding or surfing but like endurance stuff, like long distance hiking or long distance bike riding, or even maybe running where like, and you know, sometimes I'll listen to podcasts or I'll listen to music, but sometimes it's nice just to like, just have your brain, you know, and go into your own head and it's this weird stuff comes out, but it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. 
Do you, are you the type of person who is like creatively inspired when you're doing, you know, exercise stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, a little, a little bit for sure. When you're not actively like consuming content, it's, it's sometimes, you know, like little small epiphanies or I'll think of like a lyric or I'll start like kind of thinking of a melody in my head and then I'll get home and grab the guitar and kind of try to find it or whatever. But yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Cause a lot of the musicians I talk to it's when they're swimming or surfing or, you know, running or whatever that like, they just end up like crafting like these songs in their head. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes it's, it can be hard to, it can be hard to find it, you know, but sometimes I'll like, I know a lot of musicians do it, but like just on my phone on voice recorder, if I like think of a little melody or if I think of something, I'll just record it in there. I mean, I've got hundreds and hundreds of just little tiny snippets. And that's another thing, even with like writing music uh, or guitar parts or whatever, I try to force myself to sit down at least two, three times a week for maybe a half an hour and just pick up the guitar because usually it's when you're not trying to come up with something is when you'll come up with the coolest idea. And then just being able to quickly document it and revisit it helps a lot. Like, cause if I sit down, like today, I'm going to sit down for two hours and I'm going to write a song, you know, usually I find if I just like little tiny snippet of just picking up the guitar and fucking around, I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And, um, well, I mean, it doesn't always true. turn into something, but usually it does. Yeah. But, and, but that's also, I mean, like, it's kind of just a good approach for life in general. It's like whenever you're going after whatever it is so hard that like you can't really get there, but when you just back off and just like, let it go. And that's yeah. when it ends up manifesting, you know, for sure. Absolutely. It's interesting. Um, so what kind of stuff do you do? Or if it's just like exercise, but if there's anything else to help just balance stress levels on the day to day? Sure. So um, like I was, like I had mentioned earlier, just for me, I find if I just go throughout the whole day, just trying to work, I definitely lose focus. And it, it helps me a lot just to take like a midday or early afternoon break and get some exercise. I mean, that's like kind of almost a requirement at this point, you know, what that is varies kind of constantly depending on you know what I'm what I'm into or like I need to have the way that my brain works is I need to have things to like kind of have on the calendar and things to look forward to to kind of have that like carrot on a stick in front of me to get through the things about life that suck yeah um and that's just what I need. Like not everyone needs that, but I have to have that. I have to like, I'm playing a show in two weeks or mm -hmm. I'm going to do a hike with a bunch of my buddies in three weeks. And like, I have to have these like little, these little rewards that give me something to look forward to. And I think a lot of that is because I spent so many years touring and I was just constantly looking at the calendar and I had like, Oh, I'm going to Japan next month. And then after that, we're going to Europe. And like, you have all these like exciting things to look forward to. And then like, you're not touring as much anymore or a pandemic hits and then you don't have those things. And then I think, I mean, I think that has to do with why a lot of people got severely depressed or, you know, have mental health issues because, you know, especially musicians, you have such like instant gratification playing every night and you're getting this positive feedback and energy from the crowd. And then you take that away and it's like, well, how do you, how do you get that now? You know? Yeah. Um, and how, how did you get that then? What did you like, what did that look like for you? Well, you know, as far as like touring, I dialed that back a, a fair amount, kind of when I had my son about six years ago, but, you know, Strike Anywhere still does a handful of things a year. So, and then like, you know, I get to meet up with my buddies and play with this band here in town and, and, you know, we have shows to look forward to. So, even though it's not something that happens all the time, I still look forward to it. And I like, like we have some shows coming up in um, March with Hot Water Music. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see all my friends. We're gonna have so much fun and hang out, you know, with all my buddies in the band. And and so I still do have those things, but I think I've had to I've had to supplement it with like the exercise or you know I've got I've got a core group of guy friends. I'd say maybe about ten to twelve, and we just plan like these these trips kind of, and it's, and it's always like whoever can come, it's not ever all the same people at the same time, but like a surf trip or a hiking trip, or we did like a hundred mile bike ride up in the Croton National Forest with a bunch of guys and, and just having like those kind of things to look forward to helps me a lot. 
like get through the day because I know in two weeks I'm doing this thing and also like planning for it, like just like the mental exercise of like planning for it and also training for it. You know, like I was actually out riding my bike a ton. I was like, all right, I'm going to ride my bike every day. I'm going to try to do seven miles a day every day to like lead up to this trip. So it yeah. gives me an objective and like a thing to kind of train for and, and work towards. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's like, I kind of have to have that to stay sane. Yeah. You know, and it's like, personal challenge stuff too. Yeah, no, absolutely. And same thing, like with that bike ride, I mean, we rode a hundred miles, we did it in two days and it's actually a lot easier than you think, especially if, you know, you're on flat ground, which is pretty flat. We're in the coastal plains here, but it was off road. And, you know, it was, it was still, I mean, it was like one day we rode for like, I don't even know, 12 hours straight or 10 hours straight. And that's a lot. And at the time, you know, it can be miserable, but then afterwards, like, that wasn't so bad. Let's do that again. You know, yeah. um, it's like some sort of sick punishment and reward. But, yeah. Um, I was out in, um, in, uh, I think November, um, I went to Catalina Islands. I'd love to go there. Never yeah, there. well, so I feel like, and this is just obviously my opinion, but I feel like you go there to just get hammered or I guess there's some nature, but like, I feel like if you go once, I mean, there's no point in going again, but so we hiked, um, it was supposed to be a three mile hike, you know, yeah. like a very short amount of time. It ended up being, I think about nine miles or something in four hours. And like the first three miles of it was like, I wanted to kill myself. It was a really, <laughs> it was such a hard, just going up this mountain and like, it was fucking brutal. Yeah, yeah. And like, I was like, oh, for sure. steps, I'm just like, I want to stop. I want to turn around, you know? And so then like, we ended up making it to like the top of that. And then like, there was like, two well I guess like three more kind of like distinct portions of it we had to go through but it was so hard but then when we were done it was just like oh that was awesome like <laughs> oh yeah yeah no I know exactly I know exactly what you mean I did um so Matt Hearn who's the singer of Evening Shadows who owns the a, a punk rock venue in town he's been doing the hiking thing for years and he was always trying to get me to do it with him and I always had with what time I had available with work I was always taking it to do music stuff and then when the pandemic hit and I wasn't like doing music stuff with my with my month off a year or whatever I have I was like all right I'm ready let's do that let's do the trips and the first one I did we did it in the uh, on the Appalachian Trail through the Smokies and bordering Tennessee and North Carolina and the first day was from Clingman's Dome like straight up i don't even know we did like 2500 or so feet elevation in one day from the dam up to this ridge and i got to the top and i literally thought like holy shit like i i can't i don't think i can do this like and there's no way to leave like i'm up here and my yes. legs are smoked it's like i'm done and I've, i'm supposed to hike like five more days of this so i was like how do you get out of here you know like where's the escape so i woke up the next day and stretched a little bit and you know had some ibuprofen or whatever and then eventually as i started hiking everything kind of loosened up and it ended up it ended up being fine and you know i think we did like 36 miles in three days oh my god um but it's a lot of elevation like you were saying like Catalina, like you're going it's not just walking on a flat and you're also carrying you know 28 pounds of yeah on a, a backpack on you but it was brutal and it was miserable. And like, at times I was like, this is horrible. I just want to be home. And then as soon as you get home, you're like, I can't wait to book the next trip. Let's go again. Where are we going next? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I guess yeah. it's kind of like getting like tattooed or something. You always forget how much it hurts. And then you're like, this is horrible. Why do I do this to myself? Yeah. I was um, actually thinking about that last night. I want to get right here filled in, but like, it's sort of, well, I guess I was thinking it was like on the bone, but it's not. But I was like, oh, it's going to end up hurting. Do I really want to do that? But <laughs> you do it, it every time. A lot. You always forget. And you're like, oh, my God, this is so painful. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, the hiking thing's fun, though. I don't know. I kind of got I've kind of got the bug um, on the hiking thing. Here's an advert in less than 20 seconds. Did you know that Wellness Provisions offers one on one wellness sessions? Yep. So if you're seeking to get healthy and ahead in life, but feeling a little stuck, then book a session and let's get you unstuck. Now back to the interview. Going back to, you know, wellness and mental health and stuff like being 
on like a long bike ride out and like we were on all these fire roads out in this like like wilderness reserve or you know hiking through these areas where like you literally have no cell phone service and you're in the middle of you know national forests it's great to like not even have the option of like putting on netflix or scrolling through instagram or whatever and it's so easy to do. I mean, everybody wakes up. The first thing you do is you grab your phone and you start scrolling, you know? So it's, it's nice to like for three or four days to like just unplug from all that. And, you know, you're all sitting around the campfire having a conversation at the end of the night. And it's just, I don't know. It's just really cool. I've gotten a lot out of it. And, you know, 20 years ago, if you told me I'd be doing this stuff, I'd be like, no way. But it's just funny how your priorities shift as you, That's... as you kind of age and progress through life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have you, are there any like kind of like mental imbalances or anything, challenges like that, that you kind of deal with? Well, you know, I never, never had any issues to speak of really until it was right about the time. I think I probably moved down to Wilmington. I was just like, I was moving from Baltimore city and I was moving down to the beach. And, um, I, I remember like specifically the first time I, I felt like, horrible anxiety or not, not like crippling anxiety, but the first time I was like, what is this? Something's wrong. And I was like, holy shit, this is anxiety. Like I never even, I've never felt this before on this scale. And, um, you know, I don't know if it was just added stress from moving or from just like change in life or, or whatever, but, um, it's kind of, it didn't really start until I was probably in my early thirties and now I'm in my mid forties. And, um, it's just something, it's not something I have to like medicate for or whatever, but it's just something I have to be aware of. And I have to stop a lot of times and just be like, all right, take some deep breaths or, you know, go on a run. I need to like hit the reset button. But yeah, it was definitely not something that, that I had growing up. Um, yeah. Like a lot of people do. I'm grateful for that. But now it's something that I just have to be aware of and I have to just try to keep it in check and um, something that I'm always looking for new ways to cope with. But you know, exercise is kind of my, my go-to for everything right now. Yeah. I probably need some more, uh, I probably need some more weapons in my arsenal. Maybe you can help me with that, but uh, yeah. Well, do you, are there certain things that trip you up or is it like kind of a general anxiety that it, it could be anything? Um, I mean, usually it's just like being like feelings of like being overwhelmed. Like I, I would say like, if I don't know. I mean, I have a fairly stressful job at, at this point and, you know, stuff can just kind of snowball and pile up or, and then if like you compound like, oh, well, the car broke down or the teacher's calling or, you know, whatever, I can handle one, two, three problems at a time, no problem. But then when it starts becoming five, six or seven um, is when I start to just feel overwhelmed and get a little bit of anxiety and just kind of, yeah, I mean, just learning to let things go, I guess, like small things just being like, that's so stupid. That's small. Like why? why is this bothering me? This should not be bothering me. And just trying to like move that out to the side and just learning to do that. Mm -hmm. Like even with like work with like, if it's a bunch of little stuff, it's like, what does this really mean? Like how big of a deal is this really? Um, right. Just per, I guess trying to keep perspective, trying do to keep you, a healthy perspective. Yeah. Do you make lists? Like, especially oh, yeah. you do. Okay. Cause I was going to say oh, yeah. like, you know, if you end up having like six things that are like, Oh my God, if you kind of just like break them down, no. Yeah. I have to, I'm like an obsessive list maker, um, for, for everything, because there's just no way, like the amount of stuff I have to juggle and keep track of just, just from work alone. Like there's just no way I could do it unless I, unless I've made lists. So I've got like online calendars where I'm shuffling stuff around. And then I've just got like little, literally pieces of paper with lists on them. And I keep lists on for everything on my phone. And like, I just, there's no way I could exist in life without that. Um, yeah for That's, sure. Yeah. Does, do, does seeing the list overwhelm you sometimes? Like if you have that many, does that ever add? Sometimes, but usually I just kind of like shuffle. I'll just be like, all right, well, these things don't matter as much. These go at the bottom. And I just like, I'm like, I have to, I have to focus on like the five things at the top, you know, and I have to get those out of the way. Cause you know, like anything, it's so much easier to check off all the little stuff than to dive into the big stuff. Right. Um, and you know, you have to like force yourself. Sometimes I, sometimes I'll have to just like shut myself in the room, like turn off my phone and be like, I'm doing this starting right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's hard. It's definitely a challenge. Yeah. What is your, um, I guess like sleep or wake routine, or do you have like a routine that you do? So I'm, uh, I'm pretty good at going to bed early now. 
Uh -huh. um, that's not a problem. Uh, insomnia has never been a thing. Like I can, I can put my head on the pillow and I can be out and I sleep pretty good. I mean, I sleep, I'd say I probably sleep like eight to nine hours a night. I, mean, I sleep a lot. I get up early and like, I'm just in, you know, I'm just on that schedule where I get up early every day. I mean, I yeah. sleep, I go to bed probably like between nine and 10 and wake up around six, six thirty every day. That's awesome. Um, but you know, I got to walk the kids to school at seven forty-five, and you know, and I live like really close to the school here. So I get to walk my son to school every morning. And that's like a highlight of the day for me. I love that. So yeah, I mean, sleep, sleep is good. I think it's important, you know, especially with like, even when I do go on tour, it's kind of hard for me to shift into like that weird alternate late night rock and roll schedule versus my home schedule. But after like a day or two, I just kind of slide into it, you know? Yeah. Are there any like, like non-negotiables that you do at home, things that you, you know, I mean, it could be anything that you do at home that you have to like adapt when you're on tour or just you let go of when you're on tour? Well, um, you know, trying to not eat complete garbage on tour is hard. Like, luckily that's kind of like a priority, at least in Strike Anywhere. We've got a bunch of vegetarians and vegans and former, you know, and I, I'm not either anymore, but I used to be vegetarian and I used to be vegan. And I still, I, I'm totally cool with eating at like vegan or vegetarian restaurants. And we kind of prioritize food now a lot. And when we'll like, you know, we're not just eating like Dunkin' Donuts or McDonald's off the highway on the way to the venue, you know, we'll be like, let's get some good food where we can stop for lunch or, you know, we're looking up food around the venue. And, you know, we try to eat, try to eat well, and just try to like get good sleep you know i mean we used to sleep in people's dog beds at their houses and on the floor and you know sleeping we had this sketchy box truck with bunks in it and we like lived in that thing for years and now we get hotel rooms you know we're old and it's like a hobby it's it's still fun and you know people still luckily pay us pretty decent money to play shows but you know we, we kind of splurge and get hotels and you know we're not all piled into one hotel room anymore yeah like we used to and uh but i mean it's important because like that it's i mean again it's letting you sleep it's letting you decompress and all of that is going to make you like your immune system healthier your mind better better energy level so then you're playing better um, you know because like you want to put on a good show and like sleep is how you're going to get there yeah and i mean i'm not like i'm not a singer but if you're a singer that's so important like take like you know what you put into your body and getting rest i mean i, I don't know I don't know how, how so many singers pull it off. Like if I do like four shows in a row, I lose my voice at this point, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's important for sure. And, yeah. uh, and you know, I, I, I definitely would love to talk to you more at some point about like supplements and different, different other things to try, because I've always just, I've tried so many different random things over the years and I'm always kind of shifting. I haven't been in like one straight consistent supplement routine for a long time, but you know, B12 or, you know, echinacea or glucosamine and um, turmeric and, you know, all these different things. I'd like to develop a better kind of more consistent routine with supplements. And, yeah. You know, immune and joints and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, okay. So I do, I mean, I do like wellness coaching stuff. And so like, if I even actually, I'm sure there's some people listening that are going to be like, oh, I'm curious, but if I go down this rabbit hole right now, the it's just, we're all going to regret it. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, yeah. I guess in short, um, I sell these wellness kits. So it's like, there's a daily basics one, there's a joint support one, uh, an immune one. And it's like two of like the best products that help like the most amount of people kind of paired together that complement each other really well. So it makes like finding those like remedies for those categories really easy. So like look on my website for that. And then we can also talk another time, but uh, yeah, supplements, they are supplementing what you're not getting in your diet or your, you know, your, cool. your routine, but yeah, they can, they can make a, make a difference. But yeah. Another thing you mentioned, I think, I don't know, maybe in one of the emails or whatever, but it was water. Oh yeah. Drinking lots of water. I drink tons of water. Um, and I actually really enjoy drinking water. We've got like one of those reverse osmosis systems put in our house and like we keep it cold in the fridge and it's just so, it's just like, it's just so nice. I love it. 
I can't get enough. I drink tons of water. I think that's important too. I always try to make sure, especially when I'm on tour and I'm like drinking or staying up late or whatever. I feel like if you just drink tons of water, it helps. It helps a lot. Um, yeah. So that would be my advice for people still out there pounding the pavement. Get your sleep, eat good food, drink lots of water. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Water is, uh, it's like, somewhere we'll say like 60% to 90% depending is the water content like in your brain in your muscles in your blood so like if you're not sufficiently hydrating and that's all dehydrating good luck functioning basically so yeah it's imperative so how do you deal with like adversity or just curveballs that life throws at you how do you cope more exercise hmm. That's a good question. I think one of the, I'm not the best at it, but one of the best ways I think is to kind of give it a second. Like being impulsive is something that I'm trying not to do in life. Like I try to like, if there's something that is a problem or adversity or whatever, it's like, all right, let's sleep on this or let's, you know, not dwell on it, but, um, just consider it and, and, and take your time to kind of formulate a reaction instead of just, you know, firing back immediately. And that's not, maybe not something I'm the best at, but something that I'm, that I try to work on and something that I try to keep in the back of my mind, whenever like a big problem happens or a curveball or whatever, it's like, all right, stop here. Let's take a step back, take a couple deep breaths and figure out like the strategy on how to, how to deal with this. Um, is that an appropriate uh, answer, I guess? <laughs> that is an appropriate answer. That's, that's really good. Um, yeah, that's a great thing to implement. And even like you said, like it might not happen. You might not be able to accomplish that every time, but you have the awareness. So the more these moments come up, you know, the more it'll just become, you know, your habit to respond that to, to have that breath before you respond. And breathing too. That's something that like, I, I really need to, I, I always say I'm going to like try yoga and I'd never do it. Um, but it's, it's, it's on my list of things to try one day for sure. And I think it would be really good for me. I just, I haven't done it yet, but like breathing, you know, breathing is important. Um, yeah. And I, and I'd like to have more, I'd like to have more, you know, kind of tools at my disposal. And I feel like that would help, you know, just, you know, flexibility and just, and all that too. There's a lot of benefits from it. I just, I need to at some point prioritize that. Yeah. Well, you know, I interviewed um, Miguel from Teenage Bottle Rocket and he has like, his business is called Yoga for Punks. And um, nice. you can, yeah, I, it's like a 30 day thing. Um, and it's like 10 or 15 minutes a day. And you're kind of focused on like one or two like postures, but it's a really good way to like get into practicing yoga so I mean you I mean I would say check that out and it's a good place to start and it's online so you can do it whenever in the day cool yeah no I'll check that out for sure yeah but yeah at breathing um makes a huge difference because it really it taps into your your parasympathetic nervous system so it actually will like rewire your brain and stuff so there's like science behind breathing nice yeah um okay do you have a quote that you like a lot? So I was very ill-prepared, like apparently many of your uh, interviewees have been in the past. And I was kind of just combing around uh, the internet, looking for something that kind of resonated uh, here before. And <clears throat> I used to be a huge fan of Kurt Vonnegut. I haven't read much of his stuff lately, but when I was young, I read like, I don't even know two thirds of his catalog or something. I was really into it. And so I was, I was looking at that and I saw a, a quote earlier that said, uh, we have to continually be jumping off cliffs and developing our wings on the way down. And I thought that was pretty cool. And um, for me, I guess it just means, you know, it's okay to kind of like search and try new things and put yourself out there because that's how, you know, you can't decide you're going to, you love something. That's the only thing you're going to love for the rest of your life, as far as like an activity or a sport or, you know, a hobby or whatever. I just think it's so fun to try new things and just kind of see what sticks and see what resonates and different things can, different things can resonate at different times in your life, you know, and um, just putting yourself out there either with like new experiences or trying new things or musically or socially, 
or you know whatever so that's to me that's kind of what that means and then like just kind of go for it and figure it out yeah know? I love it and to remember too that like especially I mean if it's something new like you're probably gonna like screw up at some point you know or it's gonna be hard but keep going because things get easier the more you do them yeah for sure Absolutely. yeah so the tagline for my business is delay dying. So I like to ask people, <laughs> um, yes. yes, if you had to give like tips or advice to someone on how to delay dying, or in other words, live happier and healthier, what would you say? Oh, man. Um, well, you know, I guess just, a, just kind of like circling back on a lot of the things I said before, but just like drink lots of water, get good sleep, try to manage your stress, you know get ex just stay moving, just stay moving, like either physically or mentally or just having things to look forward to. I mean, for me, it's just like, I just got to keep going. You know, when you sit still and you're just docile, that's when you die. You know, you got to have, you got to have uh, those little rewards and those little things that keep you going, keep you, yeah. keep you looking forward to the next day, you know, and just, I guess, just being able to kind of moderate things and, you know, eating shitty food and drinking whatever else it's like you know everybody does it but as long as you just don't do it to excess or you can like have a way to self-regulate a little bit is important and um you know i know a lot of people that have struggled with that and you know every uh, you know it's just it's a huge thing in the music world and just figuring out ways to kind of cope with that and um and manage it um and just everything in moderation you know yeah wonderful that's good advice um Next question, final question for you to then move on with your day from this interview. Um, do you guys, do either of your bands have anything cool coming up or coming out that you want to share on? Well, funny you mentioned it. Uh, Evening Shadows is a show coming up at Reggie's on, what's the date? March 13th. March 13th. Um, that is with uh, Decent Criminal. Yep. And Evening Shadows and a couple other bands. And yes. that should be really fun. Yeah. First time we've played in a while. So really looking forward to that. And um, Strike Anywhere has a handful of shows, Hot Water Music and Be Well, um, two bands that we're really good friends with. That's up in the Northeast. That's like Boston, New York, Philly, Jersey. And that's sometime in late March, I believe. Late March. Yeah. So that's, that's all I have kind of lined up right now. No new records coming out or anything, but Evening Shadows has a full length that's on Spotify and wherever um, that came out last year. People could check out. Striking Arrow put out a record. I guess it's been over a year at this point. The Nightmares of the West is an EP that we put out a little bit ago. So check that out if you haven't heard it. But yeah, just hopefully a couple more things getting lined up here in the next couple of months. Yeah, then you'll have more things to look forward to. <laughs> I know. I, I can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait to see everybody. Right. Well, thank you so much for making time and being here and chatting. And I'm super stoked uh, for what is it like? I don't know, three weeks away or whatever when uh, the show at Reggie's on the 13th. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely.